Hello everybody and welcome back to our uh, final part of uh, this tutorial uh, about the uh, flow in 3D flow in helical uh, pipe. This uh, in this tutorial I will show you how to uh, uh, reach your solution and uh, simulate your uh, results. Now we go to but before we go to setup, I want to tell you that we forgot last time uh, to uh, uh, do something in the mesh. Just double click on the mesh. Uh, what we forgot is to assign names to the faces of uh, the uh, uh, inlet, outlet, and the pipe wall. And this is important in order to see them in the boundary conditions when uh, you uh, go to uh, the solution. Now, uh, I did them, but I will show you how to do them. You go to graphics, click on this point to see better and now make sure you click on faces and you come here you right uh, sorry you left click first on the face and then you right click and go to a uh, create name selection and you write uh, outlet for this part and press ok i did it here it's on the uh, left the same uh, is done for the uh, other end you go you press double uh, sorry you uh, left click then you right click and you create name selection and you write inlet and for the uh, pipe wall you do the same you click on the uh, body then you uh, right click and click name selection write pipe wall and press ok and then after that you go and click on mesh and then you click update and you will see here a message uh, written that the mesh translation to fluent was successful so when you see this message just exit and go to setup and double click now here mm, before you start uh, your solution fluent asks you uh, some uh, choices provides some choices for you which are uh, single precision or double precision now uh, double pre what is double precision we will choose double precision. Double precision is uh, necessary in cases where your geometry uh, has a disparate features. Uh, disparate features, for example, uh, if your geom you have a geometry as a very long uh, and thin pipe, uh, or if your geometry involves multiple enclosures connected via small uh, diameters. And uh, an example of this is an automotive manifold and uh, other cases are uh, problems where uh, uh, in, where these problems involve involve high thermal conductivity ratios or uh, high aspect ratio grids uh, or for uh, some kind of multi-phase problems so let's choose uh, double precision for our case here and uh, processing options serial or parallel let's choose parallel however I will tell you the difference Parallel is, uh, sorry, uh, let's start with serial. Serial processing option is uh, uh, when your system solves using a single solver processor. And a parallel uh, uh, processing option is uh, solving using multiple processes on the same PC or on different PCs in a network. Uh, which means that uh, in a parallel processor, ANSYS uh, takes advantage of uh, multiprocessor or, or uh, what we call multi-core systems by employing domain decomposition which uh, divides the simulation model into uh, multiple processes or what we call subdomains. Here each subdomain is computed on a separate processor or a separate core and the multiprocessors uh, work in parallel to speed up your calculations. So let's choose the number of processes. Let's increase them to uh, four and click OK. Now uh, we will start our uh, uh, solution. Uh, the drawing is imported by uh, default, and uh, we uh, have to make some modifications here. So uh, waiting for the drawing. Here we go. Now it's by default 
uh, clicked on uh, general you can double click on general if it's not the case and you are uh, in front of two choices uh, uh, the type uh, of solver pressure based or density based um, uh, briefly pressure based is used for incompressible and mildly compressible flows however uh, density based is used for high speed compressible flows which is not the case here so we will stick on the pressure uh, based flow since we have uh, also uh, a, a small velocity which the which means that uh, we assume that our uh, flow is in the incompressible uh, case and now we go to modules and uh, we click on we double click on energy energy you choose energy on when you are dealing with some variables like temperature when you are dealing with temperature and uh, uh, so you uh, when you deal with temperature and the heat stuff you choose uh, the energy equation let's choose it for our case and click OK and you double click on we on viscous laminar now we are using laminar by default and we will stick to it but uh, let me show you uh, the options here inviscid you can choose inviscid or inviscid when you uh, don't have uh, any uh, viscous flow there is no viscous flow you chose you choose the viscous for laminar you choose laminar and for turbulent you choose one of the methods uh, down here we will not get uh, into it uh, since we are we will not deal with it uh, right now let's leave it to other tutorials and make this tutorial as short as possible uh, so choose laminar and click OK or you can leave it as default now we go to materials and uh, you can choose the type of material uh, you want here for fluids and for solids uh, for example if you want uh, it's air by default and for solid it's aluminum by default but in case you want another uh, option uh, you go to air and double click uh, for fluid then you go, uh, you modify, you can modify your properties here of air or you can choose uh, from the fluent database another uh, type of uh, fluid in the uh, fluid materials uh, here. And when you choose one, you click uh, save, then you close and then you uh, modify the properties if you want, then you click change create and then close. The same process uh, is also uh, correct for the solid. Let's go to boundary conditions and let's go to inlet. Now by default uh, the flu uh, fluent uh, uh, assumes because you named the uh, one face inlet uh, it automatically uh, chooses the type to be a velocity inlet and when uh, you assume uh, outlet when you assign outlet to a phase it automatically uh, choose, uh, chooses pressure outlet so uh, it's, uh, it's also uh, worth to double check before uh, you proceed pipe wall it's also assigned wall so no need to change anything uh, except for inlet we double click on inlet and we uh, choose the velocity let's choose 4 meter per seconds and click OK now we go to solution methods and we will not speak about this uh, in this tutorial we will leave it for the other tutorials and uh, we will stick to the scheme of the uh, simple method uh, we go now to uh, monitors and we go to residuals and here let me explain a bit uh, the uh, because we are dealing with CFD problems, we must keep in mind that uh, CFD problems in general are nonlinear, and the solution technique uh, use an iterative process to successively improve a solution until convergence is reached. Now, what is convergence? One definition of convergence is said to be a limiting behavior of an infinite sequence or series towards some limit. Uh, convergence, however, is measured by the level of residuals which are here in the residual uh, monitors. Uh, so we choose the, uh, for continuity, you choose the absolute criteria and uh, for the others, x-velocity, y-velocity, 
you have to choose here now uh, let's stick to the uh, default values however uh, some people uh, might choose uh, 10 to the minus 6 for all the uh, variables so uh, you click OK and now let's uh, go to initialization because you need to initialize your solution before starting uh, before running your calculations now uh, solution initialization uh, is of two types hybrid and standard now what's the difference the difference is that in standard initialization uh, fluent uh, allows you to provide your uh, your own initial guess, guess uh, sorry your own initial guesses um, therefore it allows you to assign values for flow uh, variables and uh, initiate the flow field uh, to these uh, values for our case we will choose hybrid and hybrid uh, is uh, an automatic guess by fluent for the initial values it's a collection of uh, recipes and boundary interpretation methods and it solves Laplace equations to determine velocity and pressure uh, fields uh, so let's click on initialize and it will initialize in a moment okay now we go to solving and we go in order to make our uh, solution or our simulation uh, more beautiful let's create an animation so click on create and activities go to solution animation and go to new object let's go to uh, let's go to vectors and now let's choose uh, vectors of velocity okay and let's choose them for the uh, interior solid click save display click close click on vector again in the animation definition window and click OK go to run calculations and double click number of iterations let's choose the number of iterations to be uh, 100 reporting interval is 1 and let's uh, click on calculate and see what results will yield so you should wait for uh, your calculations in order to finish now for uh, this time let's stop here and uh, see uh, the results so uh, to see your animation here you should make sure that uh, you have reached convergence and uh, in order to see the animation you go on the left you go double click on animations you go to solution animation playback and here you find your animation animation one and uh, you click play to see your animation going now you might ask why is it uh, so dense here on uh, the outlet it is because if you recall from the uh, previous uh, video about meshing in part 2 we uh, made uh, more uh, meshes here on the outlet in order, in order that we can study more the uh, you can see more the uh, vector velocity or the results any result uh, it was on this region now you can see this uh, how the velocity magnitude is uh, changing and uh, thank you for watching everyone and I hope you enjoyed and uh, please leave your comments uh, down for any questions I can uh, be uh, in touch with you thank you very much and uh, see you in the, in the later tutorials